Hello everyone, today in this video we will be discussing the fifth module of DDCO which is a uh, basic processing unit and pipelining. Okay, two things are there, basic processing unit and pipelining. Okay, so these are the six important topics from the exam point of view. Make sure you watch this video till the end. Please look and score more than 80% marks and please do like and subscribe. It helps me make more videos like this. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. The first one is some fundamental concepts. Okay, so you'll understand what are the fundamental concepts in processing. What do you mean by processing? One instruction is there, how to execute that instruction. Okay, what all happens behind the scenes when an instruction is executed, okay. So the first thing is the processing unit that executes the machine instructions. Okay, there are instructions present which need to be executed one by one. Okay, so the processing unit which does that is called as instruction set processor, ISP or processor or controlling process unit. All these three things are same name for the other thing, uh, means uh, different names for the same thing. Okay, so the processor what it does, it executes the instructions. Very simple, processor executes the instructions. To execute any instruction, the processor needs to perform three steps. Steps. How many steps needs to be performed? Three steps needs to be performed. The first is fetch the contents of the memory location pointed by PC. Okay, PC is the program counter. Okay, so these are the set of instructions, and the program counter will be pointing to the next location where the instruction needs to be fetched. Now, that instruction can be uh, writing to the memory or reading from the memory. So memory is involved here, and in the memory, which location you need to do that operation? That location is fetched. Then increment the program counter PC plus 4. So it will point to the next instruction. This is the next instruction it will point. And the previous instruction it's taken, carry out that instruction. So three steps are there, fetch, increment and carry out. So here we'll be using a single bus structure. Single bus organization means the processor contains only a single bus. Okay, so processor is connected to one single bus. That single bus has three uh, types of data, uh, three types of information, which is data, address, and instructions. These three informations are transferred in that single bus. Okay, data and address lines are connected to the MDR and MAR. MDR means memory data register. MAR means memory address register. So the data is stored in MDR and the uh, address value is stored in MAR okay suppose I want to store one in location X so one will be stored in MDR and X will be stored in MAR okay instruction decoder and control unit these two are the other things which is decoding the instructions and control unit will be sending the control signals processor registers there will be registers from R uh, not till R n minus 1 these are the general registers the data will be stored inside that and there are three temporary registers Y Z and temp okay so this is the diagram let's have a look at the diagram so in the diagram what you can see is first we'll be having a PC here okay PC is the program counter and this will be connected with the bus this is a single bus here okay and these are the control instructions the instruction decoder and the control logic IR is present here instruction uh, register R not till R n minus 1 these are the general purpose registers and the temp register is also connected here to store any temporary value coming to the left hand side here we have the memory bus okay memory bus is connected with MER and MDR this is the data line this is the uh, address line and here will be performing the operations okay max operation is present here so the data will be inserted from here as well as here okay and the uh, max will be calculating the result and it will be sent to the first input in ALU here addition subtraction x or all those operations will be performed this is the other one two operands are needed and one operator is needed so the performing uh, operation will be performed and the result will be stored in z z will be sending back the uh, result into the register bus so from here if it is stored to the if it is to be stored in the memory it will be transferred if it is to be stored in another register like r4 it will be stored uh, transferred to r4 okay so this is the uh, structure of the uh, bus internal processor bus next we have register transfer what do you understand by the term register transfer register transfer means we are transferring the value of one thing in one register to another register okay from r1 to r2 we are transferring this is called as register transfer to transfer the data from one register to another register transfer is used here flags r i in and r i out is used what do you mean by r i in r i mean in means if r i in is equal to one it means data on the bus is to be loaded into r i okay so this is the r i and this is the bus from the bus data is loaded here if r i is equal to one if r out is equal to one means content of register is placed on the bus it is the reverse of it registers content is placed on the bus in case r out is equal to one okay all operations and data transfers within the processor take place within the time periods called as processor clock what is processor clock how many instructions are to be performed within one second that is called as uh, that speed is set by the processor clock 
okay and this is the diagram as you can see here in this diagram we have the registers present here and in this part we have the operations being performed the input and output will be sent to the internal processor bus okay and this is the uh, circuit diagram for input and output getting one register bit for getting one register bit this is the circuit diagram okay this is just for information and uh, performing an arithmetic and logic operation can also can be carried out at this point okay so here the logic and the arithmetic operations are carried out this part this part is uh, corresponding to this part here okay so here the input goes and the second input goes here the operation is performed and the output is stored in z moving on to the next topic which is fetching a word from the memory okay so this is the memory and this is a word which is there in the memory you have to fetch it and display it into the screen how does that happen processor specifies address of the memory location where in the memory i have to store the uh, uh, take the word from fetch means taking the word from where it is stored that address has to be specified by processor now i have the address that address will be transferred to mar mar is memory address register right mar will be having that address then processor issues read signal on the control line in the memory bus so the read signal will be issued on the control line so the read will happen from the memory location to the uh, bus when the requested data is received it is stored in mdr after receiving the data it will be stored in mdr memory data register and from the memory data register it is either shown into the output or it is taken to any other register whatever is the required uh, need okay that will happen that is the last step from mdr it is transferred to the other register similarly we have the storing word into the memory the reverse process here processor specifies the memory where the word is to be written inside the memory where it is to be written that will be specified by the processor okay and the processor will be storing that value in the memory address register that address will be stored here where the data is to be stored in the memory processor uh, then the data is kept in mdr that is to be stored mdr will be having the data that is to be written mr will be having the address where it is to be written okay processor issues right signal on the control line from the memory bus okay so there is a right signal getting issued so that the uh, data will be returned into the memory wherever it is to be written then the data is transferred from mdr to the respective memory location next we have execution of complete instruction now see the instruction can be as follows consider the instruction add r3 uh, comma r1 r3 is in bracket that means what r3 suppose that this is r3 it has the value x r1 has the value y okay now add r3 r1 in bracket r3 is written means what r3 has the value x right and what x has the value that i have to take okay suppose x has the value 2 okay i have to add 2 with r1 r1 has y right i have to add 2 plus y and store it in r1 only that it means okay which adds the content of memory location pointed by r3 what is pointing to by r3 x is pointed by r3 and the content of the x is added with r1 okay and it is stored in r1 only the steps performed are as follows to do this operation the first one is fetch the instruction what is to be done add r1 r3 this is the instruction it is fetched fetch the first operand first operand is uh, the location pointed by r3 perform the addition after going inside r3's location and taking out that value and we will be adding with r1 and load the result in r1 the final result will also be stored in r1 the following are the control sequence for the same okay in exam if you ask you have to write this okay so here it's very simple to see what's happening the instruction add r3 r1 is present here okay this instruction pc out pc out means whatever the instruction is there that address will be stored in mar and the read operation will happen whatever the instruction is that read will happen select for add z in means after the first instruction is taken the pc has to be incremented plus 4 value right so this will happen select for add and z in so z value will be 4 okay and z value will be stored in P, uh, pc in means added to pc in okay after adding uh, the value of z to pc in will be having the next instruction pointed by pc now y in and wmfc okay this is for the uh, waiting commands then we have mdr out ir in in mdr out the memory data registers out and ir in instruction register in instruction is stored in instruction register and the memory data uh, r out will be stored in the data which is pointed by this uh, address right that will be stored here okay then r3 out whatever the value of r3 is there that will be taken now till now what we have is here it was the fetching phase okay we have fetched the values now this is the execution phase here what all we did we took the pc value add uh, and uh, took took the instruction stored it in ir1 then i stored the address here and from the address took the value of that uh, register in the mdr 
and that MDR out is happening and that value will be uh, taken in as an input. So okay, MDR out that I value will be x, x will be pointed to so 2 will be taken from the x it is pointed by uh, pointed to 2 and 2 will be taken and the uh, uh, instruction will be stored here what is to be done now r3 out mar in read okay so finally in mar in the second instruction will be taken okay r1 out y in wmfc the r1's value and the r3's value both are present now by these two instructions okay now what we'll be doing will be uh, select y add z in okay mdr out select y add z in now we are adding the values of r3 out and r1 out okay and we are selecting y selecting y means adding operation after adding the value stored in uh, z1 in whatever the value of r3 plus r1 is there that will be stored in z1 in z1 out will happen so z's value will be getting transferred to r1 in so r1 will be having the result of r3 and r1 and then the operation will be ended very simple seven steps you just need to know here we are taking the instruction storing it in mar and we are incrementing the value of pc here the value of uh, pc is stored uh, from the z out and this is the waiting uh, call and here we are taking out the value of mdr out of the uh, address which is stored here and r3 out r1 out the value of r3 and r1 is fetched the operation happens add operation the value is stored in z in z in transfers the value from uh, z to the r1 so r1 will be having the result of r1 r3 plus r1 okay just this much if you write and explain it you will be getting the full marks okay Moving on to the last topic, which is pipelining. What do you mean by pipelining? Pipelining means organizing activities for concurrent execution is called pipelining, means parallel execution. Okay. So if there is one instruction here, one instruction here, one instruction here, at this point, all three instructions are being performed. In this point, two instructions are performed. So this is called as pipelining. At some points of time, uh, multiple operations happen. A pipeline processor may process each instruction in four steps. Okay. So any instruction it has to go through four steps f for fetch fetch means read the instruction from the memory d means decode decode the instruction and fetch the source e means execute perform the operation w means write store the result okay so there are four instructions to be performed instead of waiting for this instruction to over then going for the next one what we can do is we can do the fetch operation here and while this one is decoding we can fetch the second operation and while this is executing, we can decode this operation as well as take the first fetch operation because fetch buffer is empty here. We can fetch the next instruction until these two is happening. And until these three is happening, we can fetch the fourth or fourth instruction. And when this is over, we can be able to execute this one and we'll be able to execute this one and this one sequentially. Okay, so at one point of time, different buffers are performing different steps of execution. This is called as stage. Stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. Okay, so four stages are being performed parallelly in different instructions okay so this thing is called as pipelining at each stage buffers are allotted to perform the set of operations in that order so in this way the time required will be less so suppose that each is taking one second one second one second so here also one second one second one second one second how much time it took one two three four five six seven seven seconds four instructions are over if it had to be performed after one instruction then the next one four seconds then again four seconds four seconds four sixteen sixteen seconds it should have taken but we have done it in just seven seconds so why uh, so that's why pipelining is used to uh, get the uh, more instructions performed in lesser time role of cache memory so see here the fetching operation takes a lot of time from the memory will go and fetch back what if we use a cache in between so that the recently fetched memories can be taken uh, very fastly that is called as fetch operation this will only work when the uh, when that uh, what is it is trying to fetch it has already been fetched in previous instruction somewhere then only cache will be required otherwise if it has not been fetched we have to fetch from the main memory but most of the time the instruction will be required what has been fetched in the previous one only okay so many many times that happens so the uh, cache will increase the memory access uh, speed next is the pipeline performance so how do you increase the performance of pipeline the potential increase in performance of the pipeline results in the proportional to the number of stages in pipeline increase the number of stages how many parallel executions can happen then the uh, performance will be increased and time will be reduced further okay this does not always happen due to pipeline hazards or pipeline stalls. Sometimes pipeline gets stopped. There are three reasons why pipeline can get stopped. First is data hazard. Data hazard means when data is not available, it cannot move to the second instruction. Control hazard. When the instruction is not available, what to do? The pipeline will stop. Structural hazard. 
when two instructions are requiring the use of same resources then there will be structural hazard the none of them will be getting the resource and both operations will be halted okay so data hazard this is an example as you can see at this uh, point here the instruction i2 e2 execution is taking a lot of time so a stall has happened here and the uh, final results uh, execution time has increased next is instruction hazard in instruction hazard in i2 it took a lot of time for the fetch operation for the instruction so what happened there is idle uh, phase here in the d and uh, uh, e also here and w also here this idle uh, phases came why because fetch operation took a lot of time and here f2 was only present see here f2 is only present at this point okay this point f2 is only present at this point so what happened is the instruction took a lot of time here okay so uh, that is the instruction hazard last one is the structural hazard structural hazard uh, it's requiring the use of same resources two are requiring use of same resources see here i1 is present here i2 is present here but i2 is getting loaded if it is getting loaded means m m has come here m means the machine instruction which is getting loaded when the load is happening at that time there is a halt in i3 and i4 okay because uh, two instructions are trying to uh, access the same resource okay in that case the halt can happen okay so these are the three ways in which the pipeline's performance will be reduced okay that's all if you found this video helpful please do like and subscribe it helps you make more videos like this and thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one